With this month's new episode of Hell of a Boss, we finally got our first real look at the Lustring, as well as the Prince of Lust himself, Osmodius. So now is the time to talk about everything we know about the two, as well as what we learned about the Seven Rings as a whole from this recent episode. My name is Deep Cut, and I'm pretty sick right now, so my videos may not be popping up as fast as usual, but click that subscribe button so you don't miss it when I do post them, because I have a few more planned. Now, in Hasbun Hotel and Hell of a Boss, there are seven rings to hell. Each ring of hell is its own little country in a way, with the seven rings being stacked on top of each other, and the pride ring is at the very top. Despite each ring being located underneath one another, we don't seem to see the bottom of any ring in another ring sky. We can even see in the greed ring once the sun sets that you can see stars, instead of just the top of whatever ring hovers above it. Each ring of hell has its own uniquely colored sky that helps distinguish them from one another, and each is ruled over by a different prince of hell. While we rarely hear the prince's names within the show, a t-shirt from the Hell of a Boss merch store showed Veroska's music tour through the seven rings of hell, with many references to demon names on the list. It was through this list that we were able to connect the names to a real-world text about the seven princes of hell, as described by Peter Binsfield. In Hasbin Hotel and Hell of a Boss, these seven princes seem to embody the sin of the rings they rule over. Osmodius, as the Prince of Lust, had created a place that caters to the lusty drive of the native demons to hell. While some fans think that the poster of Angel in the Lust Ring is evidence that he has been there or could travel there, Earthborn sinners are actually only allowed to be in the Pride Ring. We don't know if this is a mystical law or just a legal one. My guess is that it's mystical, as Vizipop has mentioned in an interview that certain angels, including fallen ones, like Lucifer, have dominion over demons, and it would seem to me that he made the rule to keep all of the sinners in the Pride Ring. We learned from the Season 1 Hell of a Boss teaser that there seems to be an elevator that takes demons from one ring of hell to another, and in this episode we finally got to see it. In this elevator, we can see some signs that cement a lot of theories that the fandom had about the Rings of Hell and how they operate. Based on these signs, it would seem that the Veroska Band t-shirt lists the rings in the appropriate order, with the Pride Ring at the top and the Sloth Ring at the bottom. It also gives an indication of what color each sky is. Similar to a rainbow, the colors of the rings from top to bottom are red, orange, yellow, green, then blue, but instead of indigo and violet, we get purple and pink for the final two rings. In earlier videos, I theorized that we actually saw the Lust Ring all the way back in the Hell of a Boss pilot, and again in Episode 2. Some fans with keen eyes noticed early on that the sky surrounding Stolas' home was pink. At the time, fans had no idea that there were going to be seven rings of hell, and a lot of us simply wrote it off as being the same red sky that we see in both Hasbun Hotel and Hell of a Boss's pilots, just at a time of day where it was lighter. After learning about the Seven Rings, I theorized that it was actually the Sky of the Lust Ring, however, something that the heart imagery in the background at Stolas' mansion really seemed to indicate. In this episode, however, we instead saw that the Lust Ring has a dark blue sky. As far as I'm aware, we only saw the sky at night, so it may be brighter during the day. However, the dark sky may be there 24 hours a day, so even at the brightest, it still seems like it's the middle of the night, something likely conducive to the sexy nightlife vibe that the Lust Ring gives. It's like if Las Vegas never had to have a sunrise. With that in mind, Stolas' sky being pink should indicate that he is living in the Sloth Ring of all places. At the end of this episode, we do see Stolas' sky while at night, and it is a dark red, very similar to the Pride Ring sky at night, so it could go either way right now. Presumably, the Lust Ring is populated mostly with succubus and incubus, demons who haunt you sexually, such as Veroska and her posse like we saw in Episode 3. We don't know if there are other species native to the Lust Ring, but as time goes on, it looks like there are more and more species we don't know about just hanging around in the background. Imps seem to be all over the Seven Rings of Hell. The show implies that they are from the Wrath Ring as a whole, even if Blitz himself is not. We also see a lot of them in the Greed Ring visiting Lululand, with hardly any other types of demons being seen in that episode. We of course also have Imp City in the Pride Ring, which according to its sign, was established in 1981, giving the sense that there were mass migrations of imps through the rings, and my current theory is that imps started in Wrath and just migrated to all the other ones, not just Pride, but even in the Lust Ring, where we see there are imps. And despite everyone acting like sleeping with an imp is about as low as you can get, they seem to work at this very high end nightclub anyways. Some people, even myself, were confused about why Osmodius, which starts with an A, would name his club Ozzy's, which starts with an O. A quick look at Wikipedia, however, shows that Osmodius has often been spelled with an O throughout history.
history. In real-world biblical lore, Asmodeus is depicted as a beast with three heads, one of a human, one of a bull, and one of a ram, which were turned to three faces on the same head here in Hell of a Boss. Interestingly, when we first see Osmodius, he doesn't look quite like himself, and this is apparently a smaller form he takes, with his tall self being his full demon form. All demons in Hell have a full demon form, and it would seem that Osmodius only likes to show himself in this form, possibly as some sort of power flex. For other characters, we only see them transform for quick flashes, like Charlie does in the Hasman Hotel pilot, or for a few simple frames like Alistair did in his prequel comic. It should go without saying that the princes are going to be very passionate about the sins that they embody and the rings that they rule over, but when Osmodius sings about lust, he talks as if lust is hurt by the idea of love. He sees Millie and Moxie and finds the love they have to be essentially non-sexual, and insists that Blitz's and Stoll's relationship is so perverted that there can't possibly be any love involved. This is clearly shaping how Blitz reacts to Stolas, and Stolas's constant vulgarity seems to make Blitz really buy into Osmodius' claim that Stolas can't love him and only wants him sexually. That being said, we can see that Osmodius himself has a loving and affectionate side. It's pretty clear that the real Fizzarali and Osmodius are in something of a relationship. When Millie attacked Fizzarali, I expected Osmodius to murder her, what with him being a prince of the entire lustering and all, but instead we just see him freak out and fawn over Fizzarali, and at some point they even nuzzle each other and smile. It is clear from the story that Vivzy Pop is weaving that she believes love and lust can go hand in hand, and that anyone claiming extremes is probably just hiding how they really feel. But she does it in such a beautiful way throughout this entire season that helps to deconstruct the way we look at ourselves and our relationships through the lens of love and lust. But there will be more on that in another video. In the background of Ozzy's club, we see more demons that look pretty new to us. Since all of the sinners are trapped in the pride ring, that means all of the new species that we are seeing here are native to hell, but not necessarily native to the lust ring. But not necessarily to the lust ring, as this club seems to entertain guests from all over hell. Very interesting characters in the background include these cool shark-based demons, which a lot of fans theorize to be from the Envy Ring. The Envy Ring, as far as we can tell, is ruled by the demon prince Leviathan, who most people know to be this giant sea monster from Abrahamic legends. Some fans have speculated that Blitz is from the lust ring due to the marking on his forehead resembling a harp. We have yet to see this sign on anyone but Blitz, his family, and Fizzarali, however, with even imps working at Ozzy's club not sporting the mark. So right now I buy the theory that it isn't less themed, but a sort of marking for everyone who worked at the same circus that Blitz grew up in. On that note, it is possible that even Osmodius doesn't know that Fizzarali is an imp. As far as we can tell, his jester getup is to hide the fact that he is an imp. This seems to be how he rose to fame and became a bit of a sex symbol, but it may also be how he is hiding his identity from Osmodius himself. Though considering he thinks of Stolas leaving his family for Blitz to be the height of lust, the jester costume may be to keep the public unaware while Osmodius finds Fizzarali being an imp to be something of a turn-on. But so far, all of this is really just speculation and I don't really have the answers. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below letting me know your theories, maybe we'll put them in the next video, or just let me know anything I might have missed for this one. See you guys next time!